You know it's bound to happen. Your airplane's in the shop for an annual inspection and all seems to be going well until you get that dreaded call from your mechanic who tells you that your prop, or props if you've got a twin, need to go out to a specialty prop shop for attention. Now there's a mystery that sort of surrounds propeller work and to unravel that mystery I came down here to Sensenek Propeller Services in Gainesville, Georgia to find out exactly what needs to be done when a prop hits a prop shop either repair or overhaul. There's a lot more that goes into prop maintenance than you might realize. Now these guys have worked on a lot of props over the years and they work on everything from traditional metal props to composite propellers. Let's talk to Dan Landis. I am the general manager slash accountable manager here at this location. We have two locations, one in Lidditz, Pennsylvania, as well as the one here in Gainesville. Uh, Kind of give you an idea of what we work on. Uh, we are a uh, authorized service center for Macaulay, we're an authorized service center for MT, and we are also recommended by Hartzell to perform overhauls on propellers and governors. Uh, we are a FAA 145 repair station. Uh, brief hif history with the company, Sensenic Propeller has been around since the early 40s. Uh, Sensenic Propeller Service has been overhauling propellers for nearly 40 to 50 years. A lot of our technicians have anywhere between 10 to 40 years experience and uh, we are a, a well uh, established company here and we are highly recommended by the manufacturers of the propellers. Unfortunately the propeller in my opinion is probably one of the biggest things neglected on the airplane but obviously it's one of the important things to that airplane. Uh, reasons why we need to overhaul propellers in the recommended or mandatory overhaul times the biggest thing that we see is corrosion, internal corrosion, uh, from moisture, condensation getting inside that hub, and that's when the corrosion process starts. Um, we find a lot of times that owners and operators, they wait until there's an issue, a problem with the prop, and sometimes, unfortunately, it becomes a situation where it's too late and something has happened. My name is Maurice Erickson. I'm the quality control inspector here at Sensenic Propeller Service, Georgia. We are doing an income inspection on a Hartzell propeller that just came in the door. Uh, being a repair station, we are important with our paperwork, making sure we're documenting everything, looking for any damage that's hidden, incoming damage, anything that might be wrong with the propeller other than what the customer has provided for us. One of the first things we're going to want to do is verify the serial number, make sure that we've got the mod model number right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to match the serial number up with uh, paperwork. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look over the propeller for any hidden damage. I'm going to check the blades, check for any major damage involved. This one was told to us it was leaking grease. As I flip it up right here, I can see that there's a large amount of grease leaking from the number two blade. So I'm going to document that with some pictures. Once all preliminary inspections are done, after we've gotten all the paperwork taken care of, we then send it to our disassembly station where our disassemblers will begin to remove any external components, de-ice components, bulkhead, and they will start to disassemble the propeller and note of any other imperfections that were not seen on incoming inspection and from there it gets broken down into boxes cleaned up and it will be moved to our uh, NDT inspection area. Uh, in this area we are checking parts for cracks, damage, corrosion, any uh, imperfections in the metal. All this will be detected during our non-destructive testing. Uh, at this process all the aluminum parts will be getting tested and all the steel parts will be getting Magnaflux. Here again, same process, same procedure. We are checking these parts for imperfections, corrosion, cracks, and damage. Okay, so the parts are submerged in dye penetrant inspection. It sits here for a certain dwell time. After the certain dwell time, it is rinsed off with a low pressure rinse, and then it is put in a heater to dry the part and then a developer is put on the part to look at it underneath a black light and he, at, at this phase we will find if there's any cracks, corrosion or damage. So now we're on to another phase of the inspection. 
which is the measuring of the components. Uh, he's got the piston rod out of that three blade propeller that we previously talked about. He's checking the, uh, the OD to make sure it's within tolerance. He's also doing a visual inspection, make sure there's no damage and wear. Uh, all his measurements will get recorded in the work order. If any of the parts are out of tolerance, they will get uh, scrapped out. Uh, red tag will be filled out and put with a part. So basically that part cannot get returned to service. Uh, a lot of the steel parts, uh, after the inspections are done, will get sent out for a process called cadmium plating. It's a fresh coat of cadmium plating that is put on that part to preserve that part to the next uh, TBO. Uh, bearing races, a lot of times we'll see wear corrosion on the bearing races. Uh, there are rework limits with those parts. If they're within the tolerance of being reworked, uh, the technician will get his tooling and rework and recondition the parts. Okay, now we're at the uh, blade conformity station. This is where the blade is measured to make sure it's still within tolerance and manufacturer specs. As you can see now, he's measuring the blade doing the leading edge uh, alignment, face alignment, blade angles, width, and thickness. Uh, he looks on the work order sheet to make sure his dimensions that he's recording are within tolerance. The whole blade gets inspected. Once it does pass the inspection, it gets moved on to another part of the inspection. We've done the conformity check. The blade has been die penetrant inspected. The blade bores inspections have been done. Now it's time to recondition the blade to make the blade look, a, look like a brand new blade again. Uh, personally, I believe it's an art to do this because you have to keep the airfoil clean. You've got to keep the shape of the blade. You've got to keep the tip the same shape that the manufacturer requires. So there's definitely an art involved in this. And after the blade is reconditioned, they have to get balanced so the blades are balanced together. Okay, before we start recondition the blade. The blade grinder will assess the blade. As you can see, there's damage to the leading edge. There's uh, quite a bit of corrosion and erosion from this propeller blade being flown. So he will start with his grinder. He, he starts with doing the heavy part of the damage first and then blending it out, polishing it to get it to a, a uh, shape of what a new blade is supposed to look like. Now if you've got a fixed pitch propeller and you want to trade some cruise speed for climb performance or vice versa, hit the aircraft's type certificate data sheet and look for static RPM values. You might be able to re-pitch the propeller and that means bending the blades. And of course the time to do that is when the prop is at the overhaul shop for overhaul. Little has done his share of prop bending and <laughs> he'll tell you all about it. Uh, what we're looking at here is a blade twisting machine. This was uh, built in Pennsylvania. It was fashioned after what the factory uses to twist the blade. What you have is two uh, hydraulic cylinders that are loaded opposing each other. Whenever you put the pressure to them, want to go one way, want to go the other. All right. First thing we do, once I put it up here, is I'll look at the stats here and see what this thing needs. And for this particular propeller, because of the contour of the back side of the blade, we have to use these templates. Templates are called out uh, by the model of the propeller. According to our templates here, the, the first station, and when I mean station, I mean that would be 16.65 inches from the dead center of the propeller out. And it would be placed on here. Well, I made this little cheating tool here to put to keep that up true on this thing. I come up here and I want to know right off the bat what I'm against here. What what is the measurement of this thing? My target, I write it down here. It says 27.5. That's where it uh, should be to twist this blade. All right, we're at 28.3. So I would put the 28.3 in pencil just to let me know where I need to be. Now, why do we do this? Why do we repitch a prop? For performance. If you want to get off the ground and up to altitude 
quicker, you're going to go with a lower pitch. If you want faster airspeed, you want to go with a high pitch. It's going to put a greater load on your engine. You're not going to get as many RPM out of it. I mean, you know, but uh, it's purely performance. What do they want to get out of their aircraft? Okay, now we're at the process of the overhaul. The blade has been measured, the blade has been reconditioned, the blade had the final inspection done. Now we're ready to allodyne the blade. Uh, allodyning is a chemical process that uh, is, is put on the blade. It helps the paint adhere to the blade as well as protect the blade against corrosion. Uh, once this process is done, the blade is dried and then it will be moved on to the paint process. Now we're at the paint process. What the technician is doing now, we are working on a set of composite blades. This is the first coat of paint that goes on the composite blades. This is what we call a spray fill. The spray fill is sprayed onto, on the blade. This fills in any kind of small voids, pinholes, any imperfections that might be left on the blade from the blade being overhauled whether a compo uh, composite repair was performed, new Kevlar was installed on the blade, new fiberglass. Uh, this basically fills in all those small voids and we're trying to get the blade back to a clean surface so when we put the final coat on the blade it's a smooth, clear finish. Okay, this is the assembly area. This is where the propeller is, comes together with new parts. Blades have been reconditioned, painted, balanced. Uh, now we're in the process of assembling, assembling the propeller. Uh, we will put it together, we will set blade angles, and we will static balance. Uh, this is the uh, important part of the uh, propeller overhaul process. We have to make sure all the checks and balances are, are correct and uh, everything is safety torqued to manufacture specs. Okay, now we're at the part of the overhaul, what we call the final propeller balance. Here we put the propeller on a uh, balance fixture and we are getting the horizontal and vertical balance to where that prop doesn't spin at the horizontal position and it won't spin at the vertical position. Uh, to achieve the balance, we add weights, washers, screws to bring the propeller in, in balance. Once the propeller is balanced, then it's removed from the stand and put back on the table. Once that propeller is overhauled and installed on the airplane, uh, as a propeller shop person, I strongly recommend having that propeller dynamically balanced on the airplane. Basically, I like to refer that to as marrying the prop to the engine. So basically, the prop in the engine is balanced in one certificate and rotating mass. A uh, couple things with the dynamic balance. It saves the life of the airplane. It saves the uh, spinners and cowling from cracking. Also prevents pilot fatigue, and it saves the life of your instruments. And I want to touch a little bit on, on the differences between a reseal slash repair versus an overhaul. At a reseal, basically that propeller, if it's a constant speed propeller, is disassembled. Everything is clean, the old grease is removed, all the old seals are thrown away. The technician will do a visual inspection. At this time we're looking for corrosion or any kind of obvious damage to that propeller. We'll dress the leading edge, uh, we'll look for any kind of nicks that can cause a stress riser or a crack. That'll be dressed out. We will allodyne and paint the blades, get a fresh cone of paint on the blades to protect them against corrosion. And then that propeller will be put back together with new seals. It'll be balanced and return to service. Also in an overhaul, there are a, a lot of parts that are required by the manufacturer to be replaced, such as seals, O-rings, uh, ball bearings, hardware, and bearings and retainers. So uh, these are all parts that, uh, here again, by the manufacturer are required to be replaced. Okay, as an owner operator, some things that, uh, that you need to perform before your next flight. Uh, basically what you want to do is I recommend grabbing your spinner, shaking the spinner, make sure the spinner's tight, run your hand down the leading edge of the blades, 
Here we're checking to see for any stone nicks, uh, what I call your, your typical V-shaped nick that can cause a stress riser and can crack and cause a blade tip failure. Also, I want to look at the blades to see if you see any grease or oil streaking down the blades. Uh, these are all concerns that you could possibly have a blown or bad seal. Uh, and also, if a, you come across a, a noticeable vibration during flight uh, that wasn't there before, that's another reason why we need to have that prop removed and inspected for, for the service. Now, pricing for propeller overhauls can vary by model, of course, and as a general rule, you're probably looking at a couple of thousand dollars for a fixed pitch propeller and probably north of $8,000 for something that's off a turboprop. Now, downtime can vary also depending on shop workload, anywhere from a couple of weeks to a month. Now, you can look for a full report on propeller overhauls in the March 2020 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. If you like this content, thumbs up down below. Thanks for watching.